Hello and welcome to the show that debates and reconstructs the most important issues of the day. You're watching The Big Picture. In a setback to 1984 Bhopal gas tragedy victims, a U.S. court has held that neither Union Carbide nor its former chairman Warren Anderson were liable for environmental remediation or pollution-related claims at the firm's former chemical plant in Bhopal. U.S. District Court John Kena dismissed a lawsuit accusing the company of causing soil and water pollution around the Bhopal plant due to the disaster and ruled that the Union Carbide Corporation and Anderson were not liable for remediation of pollution-related claims. The court also ruled that it was Union Carbide India Limited and not its parent company UCC that was responsible for the generation and disposal of the waste that polluted drinking water and the liability rests with the state government. The industrial accident, the worst in Indian history, led to the leak of poisonous methyl isocyanate, claiming more than, uh, more than uh, 15,000 lives and injuring close to 6 lakh people. The ruling has stunned many who were pressing for compensation for the devastating injury and thousands of deaths resulting from the leakage, while it comes with no surprise to a few who, after years of fighting the case, were beginning to think it was a lost cause, as even the Supreme Court of India quashed the CBI's petition last year to increase the punishment of Keshav Mahindra and two other Union Carbide India officials accused in the case. Tonight, on The Big Picture, we discuss the implications of the judgment and we ask our panelists whether this has now become a classic case of justice not only delayed, but outrightly denied. Joining me in the studio is Praful Bidwai, senior journalist who's also followed the case closely for years. Also joining us will be Chandra Bhushan, Deputy Director of the Centre for Science and Environment. On the phone line joining us in just a bit will be Viju Krishnan, Joint Secretary of the All India Kisan Sabha. And I'm happy to announce that uh, Satinath Sarangi, uh, a foremost activist who's been following, and, uh, following the case as well, will also join us on the phone line in just a moment. But I'd like to start the show, if I could, uh, with Mr. Bidwai, uh, who's in the studio right now. Sir, were you surprised? at all at this judgment, given the fact that our own Supreme Court last year quashed the CBI judgment, who, which had asked to increase the punishment of Keshav Mahindra and the others? I am shocked and pained, but I'm not surprised because the same judge, John Keenan, had earlier treated this case shabbily in 1985-1986. In, in, uh, 1985, he turned down the government of India's plea that the case be held in the United States. He, he ruled on, the, on a very core principle called forum non-convenience and send the case back to India, uh, giving no justice to the victims. Now, his judgment is wrong and perverse in so many ways. First of all, Union Carbide Corporation was a really shell company. 51% owned by Union Carbide Corporation of Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, every single operational decision, every single design decision, every single minute decision about what pesticide to make, how much to store, what substances to import, what substances to, to, to export, yeah. was made through a wholly owned subsidiary of Union Carbide Corporation called Union Carbide Eastern, based in Hong Kong. Right. So Union Carbide India Limited had absolutely no agency, no direct role at all. Mm. So it's Union Carbide Corporation's liability, 100%. And it's this, this was documented not just by journalists like me, but by scientists, engineers, by government experts, and so on and so forth. Namely, that the, dis the, 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 the ac accident occurred because of major design, fatal design flaws for which Union Carbide Corporation was responsible. Must be responsible. Right. Right. Uh, the operating practices, practices were specified in the minutest detail by Union Carbide Corporation. The accident's uh, handling was determined by Union Carbide Corporation, which refused to part with vital information on how to treat the victims of MIC, methyl isocyanate, about which is a proprietary chemical on which UCC alone had the necessary information. Right. So it's UCC right through and its board of directors, uh, including Warren mm. Anderson, the right. chairman, who was obviously responsible. This right. per and now, Union Carbide was taken over 100% by Dow Chemical, 
and Dow is now must take right. over the liability. We'll, we'll, can't we'll, just take we'll talk over about the that, sir. We'll talk right. about that in just a bit. I want right. to get another perspective. And Chandrabhushan has also joined us on the program. Welcome to the show, first of all, sir. In dismissing the case, Chandrabhushan, Judge John Keena has argued that there can be no individual liability for defendant Anderson because, and I quote the judgment, he did not personally approve the location of the Bhopal plant of Union Carbide India Limited. Instead, the ruling has hinted that it was the government of Madhya Pradesh that was responsible for allotting the land to the plant. Your reaction to that, first of all, sir? I think it's a perverse uh, statement in many ways. First of all, what Praful has said, I completely agree. Uh, it's a documented case. Everything is very, very properly documented. This judge has given some of the worst kind of judgment on Bhopal for, la, for, the, uh, for, for previous three times. Mm. As far as B Madhya Pradesh government allotting the land is concerned, the, if Madhya Pradesh government allotted the land, Anderson was the chief, and he agreed on that land. You know, at the end of the day, a location of the plant is selected on, on the basis of mutual agreement. And therefore, Anderson had a role. Anderson, Anderson could have said, I don't want this land, but he agreed on this land. And uh, the plant came up, but, but, that, but that's not the point. The point is that an accident took place, as Prafull said, Union Carbide was completely in control of this plant. Uh, when we did a research a few years back, looking at the plant design and the design of waste management plant, uh, it, it was quite clear to us that everything in minute detail was designed uh, by Union Carbide. Right, right. Uh, and uh, uh, so absolutely, if, if, if the waste disposal problem has happened, it has largely happened because of the faulty design, hmm. simply because Union Carbide was callous in terms of uh, handling the waste. Right. The waste disposal pond, the waste disposal system were very, very badly designed, simply because at that point of time, India didn't have the law. There was a clear double standard. U.S. had the law. A similar plant in U.S. had a much, much better waste disposal system, much, much more careful uh, design and equipments were used than right. what they did it in India. So it's also a case of double standard that Union Carbide uh, employed when, we, when they were designing uh, this plant in, in Bhopal. Absolutely. Shadar Bhushan, we'll come back to you. Stay with us. I'd, 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 I've also been joined, uh, we've also been joined uh, by uh, Satinath Sarangi, foremost uh, activist of, of the Bhopal uh, victims as well. Uh, thank you so much, Satyu, for joining us on the program. Uh, my question to you, of course, after you give us uh, your first reactions uh, on this judgment, uh, Union Carbide has also uh, said uh, that it has paid for $70 million till date in compensation. And Dow Chemicals now says uh, that since... Uh, They've only taken over the company 16 years after the disaster happened. They're not liable to pay anything else. Even if that may be true for one second, let's assume. What hope do these victims have? Uh, around 1 lakh victims haven't received any compensation. What do those people have to look forward to? Well, I mean, it's upsetting, but the fact is that it is not the first time that this is happening. Judge John Keenan has dismissed this case thrice before, and all three times we have won. We have gone to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. We have shown uh, what kind of bias the judge had demonstrated. And we have, we have won the case. And we are very hopeful that we will win it again. And we are also hopeful that once we win, it will go for a jury trial and it will not come back to the same judge. Absolutely. We've heard the statement, Satyu, uh, that, uh, that your uh, organization has come out with that you'll go to the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals. Uh, now, my question, sir, again, uh, would be uh, uh, that do you think that even if we, uh, you, you do... Uh, uh, you know, you're able to go to the Court of Appeals. Do you see any hope there? As the U.S. Court, Court of Appeals is known to be very stringent and don't really uh, uh, entertain most appeals as well. W what do you think your chances are? Well, they have entertained thrice. And the, and the reason I say this, because of the abundant documentary evidence we have, as television is saying, that we have very clear evidence that the waste disposal system here was... Uh, designed and supervised by Union Carbide Corporation USA, that as the majority stakeholder, Union Carbide Corporation had absolute control over the day-to-day -day operations of the factory. And we have evidence that we, we, will, we have presented that shows that Union Carbide Corporation USA was also aware of the consequences of the reckless dumping of hazardous waste. So 
uh, all this, all the evidences have to be would, would be seen by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Right. And we're sure that the inference they will draw would be very different from what John Keenan has drawn. Right, right. Uh, Satu, please stay with us. I request you to stay with us uh, one more time. We'll come back to you. I want to get Praful Bidwai in for just one second. Sir, there was a protest on Wednesday uh, in Bhopal with the protesters claiming that Dow Chemicals, even though its takeover of urine carbide has inherited its civil, criminal and environmental liabilities in Bhopal. But the corporation, of course, refuses to accept them. Uh, your views on, on why Dow Chemical should actually accept all the responsibility now? It's very simple. If Dow takes over the assets, um, you know, and productive plant and uh, marketing operations of Union Carbide, it must also take over liability. That's a fundamental principle of law. You can't merely take over the assets and make profits and then say we are not liable for anything um, that on the on the negative side of the balance sheet, on mm. the loss side of the balance sheet. Mm. So this is a hypocritical position. It is legally untenable. And I think the the only reason why Dow has been able to get away with this to some extent, mm. um, not in court, but outside court, is because there are people in the government of India who are sympathetic to Dow. And that's a very important point you've raised. Yes, I'd like you yes, to elaborate yes. that on in ju just a bit. I want to go to uh, uh, I want to go to our other guest, Chandra Bhushan, and ask him this: uh, uh, Given the fact that everything that's played out till now, till date, the, with the judgment in perspective, Chandra Bhushan, uh, is this not then justice not only delayed but outrightly denied? Well, uh, as far as denied is concerned, as Satyu said, that uh, victims of Bhopal are quite hopeful. Uh, in many ways, justice was denied to them in India as well. Our Indian Supreme Court didn't give them uh, a justice that they deserve. But in the US, uh, uh, the victims are still hopeful. Of course, we, uh, the justice has been delayed by more than 25 years now. Right. And uh, But we are hopeful that, uh, as uh, Satyu said, that. Uh, the next appeal, uh, the appeal court will hear us. We have immense documentary evidence. Right, right. And the case is so strong, linking Union Carbide with Union Carbide India Limited. And I want to bring a point which uh, Praful said is very important to understand that Union Carbide, Dow Chemical took over the liability of Union Carbide in the US. All the liability that Union Carbide Corporation US had, all those liabilities, including asbestos liability, uh, liability of toxic uh, disposal, any, every other kind of liability that Union Carbide Corporation had in the U.S. was taken over by Dow Chemical. Right. Now it refuses to take the same kind of liability in India. I think this is a very important point of double standard that needs to be brought up. Right. Uh, I'm also being told that Viju Krishnan, uh, the Joint Secretary of the All India Kisan Sabha, has also joined us on the phone line. Thank you, Viju, for joining us on the big picture. Your first reaction to the judgment uh, from the Manhattan court yesterday. Uh, your views on that judgment. It's a shocking uh, judgment. and uh, But uh, like uh, Praful said, uh, I am not surprised because uh, the Indian people have been betrayed by the Indian government itself and even the Supreme Court's judgment was not uh, really uh, favoring the uh, Indian uh, people who were the victims of the um, Union Carbide and the gas tragedy. So I am not uh, really uh, surprised by it, but it's a shocking, uh, despite all the documentary evidence. These documentary evidence was presented even uh, to our courts, to, the, uh, to our government, but the people have not got justice. Justice has been denied. It is so uh, decades after the uh, actual uh, tragedy itself. Right. And the people are suffering. It right. Is, uh, it is uh, generations are suffering. It's a sad day for us Indians as well. Would you, so you're saying, in fact, that the government and the courts of India, our own courts, uh, let us down. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It has let the people of India down. It has let the victims of Bhopal. And it has uh, stood by the uh, uh, criminals. It has allowed the criminals to go scot free. The government is, uh, I think, totally uh, responsible for such a situation. What justice has not been uh, uh, available to the victims within India, I don't know how, uh, how far uh, we can expect from uh, United States uh, courts in United States. Because we see the last three uh, times which other speakers also mentioned how the same judge has uh, taken adverse position. Right. Uh, Vijay Krishnan, uh, try and stay with us if you can, sir. We'll come back after a short break. We'll come back and talk to Satyu, uh, Satinath Sarangi as well uh, on his views. And we also talk about how Dow Chemicals as the, uh, one of the co-sponsors of the Olympics and what pressure can be built on that company. That's after the break. Don't go anywhere. Keep watching The Big Picture.
Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture and we're still discussing the shocking, some would say, judgment by the U.S. Manhattan Court uh, in which it exonerated Union Carbide uh, and Warren Anderson from all responsibility, all liability towards the Bhopal gas victims. Uh, Satyanath Sarangi is still on the line with us. Uh, Satyu, uh, the, the company now, Dow Chemicals, is co-sponsor uh, of the London Olympics this year. Bhopal residents and the protesters are planning a Bhopal Olympics uh, that will have children affected by the disaster participating. A sort of a very public dissent to Dow being allowed to sponsor the Games. Now, the protesters claim that Dow Chemicals' sponsorship of the Olympic Games uh, was an attempt to whitewash its crimes not just in Bhopal, but in Vietnam, other countries, Nicaragua, South Africa, New Zealand, USA, and other parts of the world. Uh, there is a month's ultimatum to the organizers to drop DAO as sponsors. There's very little chance of that happening. What do you say? No, we, are, we are still haven't given up. We are still trying because one is that the London Olympics organizers, SEBCO, hasn't yet given us time because we have insisted that at least our position should be heard, that SEBCO should give a proper hearing. So we are still expecting, and even if, if that doesn't happen, we are hoping that our supporters will put up enough uh, protest uh, before and during the Olympics. That is going on. But but fundamentally, I think we have already, by exposing Dow's crimes, we have defeated their whole agenda of whitewashing because they have got more slack than ever on this issue. Right. Right. Uh, if I could go to Chandrabhushan very quickly before I come to Mr. Prafal Bidwai in the studio. Sir, uh, there were protests all over America yesterday in Boston, in Berkeley, in the US, London, as well as in some parts of Canada. You think even as public pressure builds, there is some, somewhere there's a sinking feeling that this will be all for nothing. Uh, what is your reading of the situation? Should we just give up hope? I don't think we should give up hope. You know, uh, first of all, I want to salute people like Satyu who have fought for years and years and they still have capacity to fight. I think Bhopal is today alive. The Bhopal issue is today alive because of uh, people like Satyu and, and others who are fighting there. And I think they have created enough momentum uh, in, in, in the civil society outside India uh, to take this issue forward. One is whether we will get the justice or not, but I think that has become more or less secondary. What is important is that companies like Dow Chemical, who greenwash, who, who shirk their responsibility, these kind of com companies, you know, the, there's enough momentum against these kind of companies. And uh, the civil society is bringing out all these uh, issues to the public, public platform. So I'm hopeful that uh, after the appeal, a jury uh, hearing will happen and, and, and a much more positive outcome will come. But more than that, what Bhopal movement has done uh, is to have tremendous, tremendous uh, benefit in terms of making people aware about environmental issues, health issues, and corporate crime and corporate accountability. Fair I bad. think the, 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 the kind of... Uh, um, uh, benefit that the world has got out of the work that, that victims of Bhopalis have done is simply incalculable and, and we will, you know, history will write about it. Absolutely. Point taken, sir. Let me come to Prof. Bilbao very quickly. Sir, do you agree with what Chandrabhushan had to say? And also you had a point to make as well. Yes, I, I completely agree. And I think uh, the point I'd like to make is that the victim's struggle in Bhopal is, is just unprecedented for its heroism, <laughs> its determination, and it's moral courage. And the, the, the great thing, we must realize that these are, there may be setbacks here and there, but humanity has fought many evils. Yeah? It's fought racism, <laughs> it's fought colonialism, it's fought apartheid, and in spite of setbacks, it has won out. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the Bhopal victim's message has spread to the whole world. And today, the whole larger, the, the agenda of corporate accountability, uh, punishing corporations for their horrible crimes against humanity mm. will get integrated in, into the larger global right. democratic agenda. And I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. We should all be grateful to the victims, the brave victims of Bhopal for, do, for teaching us this right. and carrying forward this great historic struggle. I'll come back to you for the last word on the show. So let me go to Viju Krishan quickly, uh, across to Viju Krishan, who's still with us. Uh, thank you for staying with us, first of all, uh, Viju. Uh, your message, if there's any going out to uh, the protesters uh, of the Bhopal, uh, of the city as well, and all the protesters and activists helping that cause, of course, after this judgment, uh, would you like to say anything 
to the protesters. To, uh, Satyu is on, on the program with us. If you'd like to say anything to those protesters, what would it be right now? I have been uh, part of the struggle uh, at times uh, in Delhi as a student activist before. And I think this struggle will continue and um, uh, the people united so, uh, will always be victorious. I, I, I would like to um, uh, end by uh, on a confident note that though it's a long-term struggle, the guilty will have to be uh, uh, brought to book and the people uh, who are suffering will also um, uh, uh, have uh, some solution for their, uh, their troubles. Absolutely. Vijay Krishnan there, thank you so much for joining us on The Big Picture. Let me go across very quickly to Satyu, Satinan uh, uh, is, Satinan Sarangi as well, who's still with us. Uh, sir, you ob obviously heard the rest of the guests, the rest of the panelists, of course, extolling uh, how, what a fight it's been for so many years. And you, of course, are not willing to give up right now. Uh, what would your message be through the medium of Rajasabha Television and The Big Picture to the victims and the protesters actually giving the support to this cause right now? If you had this platform to say something, to them, what would it be? Is that this is everybody's fight, not just the Bhopal victims, because as the, the corporate crime is spreading all over, we are all victims of corporate crime in one way or other, victims of pollution in one way or other. <laughs> so it's everybody's fight, and there's a need for everybody to get into this, because what happens in Bhopal will determine what happens to the other co corporate victims anywhere in the world. Right. My last question to you, Satyu, if I could. Uh, we just mentioned just a while ago there were protests all over uh, 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 the Western world, in London, in Canada, in the US as well. Do you think building public pressure, uh, not just in India, of course, also in Western countries, in the US itself, uh, will in fact help? And do you see that support coming in uh, from the liberal pockets of these countries? I couldn't get the last part, sorry. Uh, my, my question to you, sir, was that we've spoken about how protest, there were protests held uh, in parts of the U.S. as well as London and Canada uh, uh, against this particular judgment by, ju by Judge John Keener right now. Uh, do you think there's enough momentum in the support that you're getting uh, in countries like the U.S. to keep this movement, uh, to, to sustain, sustain this movement and keep this movement going uh, and bring it to its logical conclusion? Is that support visible there? Yes, we have support from all all sections of society in the American society. We have support from the trade unions. We have very good support from a number of senators and congressmen. In fact, they have together written to Dow and say against Dow's uh, following double standards and not taking up Indian carbides liabilities in India, whether as well as it has done in the U.S. And it's broad sections of students also that. At least in 30 universities around, we have some or other kind of supporters all over. So, and this is where it is most effective because it is the underbelly, it is the belly of the beast, so to speak, where Dow has its headquarters. So right. we, because of all these efforts, because of the support that we're getting in the international court of public opinion, Dow is doing very badly. Right, right. And we, we do hope that you get more support, of course, in your fight uh, for justice. Thank you so much, Satinath Sarangi, for joining us on the program. Uh, if you could uh, go across again uh, to Chandra Bhushan and ask him this very briefly, sir, if you could, uh, for a bit. Uh, Satyu just mentioned what international support uh, the protesters and the, and the activists are getting. What do you think, in your opinion, can civil society and the public itself in, inside India uh, do to actually show uh, the support and the concern uh, for this particular issue? Do you think civil society has done enough? Is there something else that could be done? What are the steps? Something? Uh, what are the steps that we could take, in fact, to show our support for this cause? I think civil society in India has partly supported at times, have given full support at other times. But I believe that the kind of a struggle that Bhopal is, I, civil society in India will have to consistently, consistently support. Uh, the Bhopal movement and give them as much support as possible because this is a long drawn fight. Uh, it's not a US fight. As I said, ultimately, uh, in many ways, Bhopalis have been betrayed by their own government and as well as by our court system. So I think there is a big fight that has to happen in India also. Bhopal is not the only corporate crime that is happening in this country. It's not the only issue of corporate accountability. We all are, as Satyu said, in the same fight. And if we want to have and win a big fight over corporate accountability and corporate crime, we all should consistent, consistently 
support the Bhopal movement. Right. Thank you, Chandra Bhushan, there uh, for your comments. My last uh, question to you, sir, last word on the show, I'll give to, to you, Mr. Bidwai. You. Uh, you obviously he uh, heard uh, what Satyu had to say, what Chandra Bhushan had to say, and uh, what Viju had to say. Of course, uh, Chandra Bhushan seems to think that we have to do a lot more as a civil society, as a civil group, uh, to actually show our support for, for uh, the Bhopal gas uh, tragedy victims. Uh, also, he mentioned that corporate crime is rampant in the country, not just mm -hmm, Bhopal, mm -hmm. but it's rampant in the country. What can we as a society do, and where do you see all of this going? Do you think civil society is alive enough to show their support? I have four things to say. I think civil society ought to take to the streets and carry out a systematic campaign against corporate malfeasance, corporate uh, misconduct and crime, not just of Dow Chemical and Union Carbide, but of all companies, right? Uh, whether it's POSCO, whether it's Jindal, whether it's Tata and so on. And that's the way, best way of expressing solidarity with the Bhopal victims. Second, our judiciary should reflect on the profound betrayal that it committed uh, by passing, by imposing an unfair settlement on the Bhopal victims in 1989, from which people got as little as 10,000 rupees for a lifetime of injury. Mm. What a terrible thing it was. Thirdly, supporters of Dow and Union Carbide in the government, such as Mr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, uh, industrialists such as Ratan Tata, who lobbied for Dow, should hang their heads in shame and say sorry. And finally, I salute the victims of Bhopal and, and, and express the greatest hope in the future. I hope their appeal wins. I, I, I would be personally delighted to see some justice done after 20 years, 28 right. years right. of the worst chemical accident right. in the history of the world. Thank you so much, Prafal Bidwai, for joining us on the program. I must thank all of my other guests, Viju Krishnan, uh, Satinath Sarangi, of course, as well as Chandra Bhushan, who joined us on the program on The Big Picture tonight. Of course, like my guest said, the fight is just not over yet. The activists and the protesters will continue to fight on and continue to drum up support internationally uh, to fight uh, this particular issue. And perhaps there might just be a small ray of hope for the victims of the Bhopal gas strategy. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Athar Khan saying goodbye and good night.